Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this short video, we will be discussing the further aspects of the architecture of a Kafka cluster. And the topics under the purview of our discussion today are broker discovery, producers, consumers, consumer groups, as well as consumer offsets. So if you have not subscribed to this channel already, please do click subscribe, hit the bell icon, and let's quickly get started. Now, a very common question that is asked about Kafka is that how does a Kafka client, that is a producer or a consumer, know to which broker it needs to connect to for reading or writing messages or events? So you should know regarding this that each broker across the Kafka cluster knows metadata about the entire cluster, which is to say that it knows where particular partitions of a particular topic reside within the cluster, which are the leader brokers for that partition and which are the in-sync replicas for that partition as well. So our Kafka client can easily connect to any server within the cluster, which is known as the bootstrap server in this case. As we can see in the diagram below, the Kafka client sends a connection plus metadata request to broker 101, which is the bootstrap broker in this case. The bootstrap server then returns the list of relevant brokers to the Kafka client. And in step three, the Kafka client can choose to connect to the needed brokers, which in this case is broker number 103. So by knowing the details of a particular broker within a Kafka cluster, our client can get connected to any broker within the cluster. And that's what we meant by broker discovery. Next, let us refresh a few points regarding producers in Kafka. So what do producers do? Producers write events or messages to Kafka topics. If the broker to which a producer is communicating fails, producers have an inbuilt mechanism to be able to recover and start communicating with another relevant broker. When producers write data to a particular Kafka topic, they can choose to be acknowledged in one of the following way. The first one is ax equal to zero. The next, in, the next is ax equal to one. And the last one is ax equal to all. Now in ax equal to zero, when a producer writes data to a Kafka topic, it chooses not to be acknowledged about the data being successfully written into the Kafka topic. In ax equal to one, the producer is acknowledged when the data is successfully written into the leader broker. And in ax equal to all, the producer is acknowledged when data is written both in the leader as well as in the in-sync replicas. And as you can also see, it is very much possible to lose our data in case of ax equal to zero. When we choose ax equal to one, the data loss chances are reduced, whereas there is no data loss in ax equal to all case. The next point is that producers can produce events with or without keys. If a producer is producing messages or events without keys, then these are added to topic partitions in a round robin fashion. Also make note of the fact that all messages which are produced with the same key are written to the same partition till the number of partitions in that Kafka topic remains same. This is because of the hashing algorithm that Kafka is using, which is the murmur 2 hashing algorithm. Few points to note about consumers next. Consumers read events or messages from Kafka topics. And like producers, if the broker that a consumer was communicating to fails, consumers can recover that mechanism is inbuilt into them. We already know that data ordering is guaranteed only within a partition and not across partitions. And the last point to note is that the same consumer can be reading data from more than one partitions. As you can see on the diagram on the right, consumer one is only consuming events from partition zero of topic T, but consumer two is re reading data simultaneously from partition one as well as partition two of topic T. So what are consumer groups? So as we all know that a Kafka topic is split into many partitions. Therefore, for the sake of scalability, we may need more than one consumer to be able to read data from a Kafka topic. Now consumers can form groups to be able to read simultaneously from a Kafka topic. 
and each member of such a group can read from 0, 1 or more than 1 partitions. But the most important fact to note here is that only one consumer can read from a given partition. So what this means is that suppose a topic T has n partitions and we have more than n consumers in the consumer group which is reading topic T, some of those consumers will be sitting idle. Next we can see a diagram in which we have two consumers in the consumer group, consumer group application 1 and consumer 1 is reading from partition 0 and partition 1 of topic A whereas consumer 2 is reading from only partition 2. Our next consumer group has three consumers and each consumer is reading from a particular partition of topic A. Our last consumer group here has a single consumer and this single consumer is reading events or messages from all of the partitions of topic A. And in the last case, our consumer group has more consumers than there are partitions in topic A. Therefore, one of our consumers, which is consumer 4 in this case, does not consume any of the messages or events and is sitting idle or inactive. And with that, we come to today's last concept, which is consumer offsets. So what are consumer offsets? Well, Kafka stores the offsets at which a current consumer group might be reading a particular topic. As an example, we can say that a particular consumer group, which is consumer group 1, might have read events till offset number 20 in partition 1 of a particular topic, topic T. So these offsets are committed by the consumer group in a Kafka topic which is called underscore underscore current underscore offsets. When they want to commit these offsets is up to the consumer group. And why exactly do we need to commit these offsets? Well, suppose even if some of the consumers or all of the consumers in our consumer group went down, as soon as new consumers would come up, they would be able to know which is the offset at which the previous consumers or the previous consumer group left reading from this Kafka topic and can continue from that point. Next, we see the semantics of how consumers can choose to commit offsets. The first case is at most once, which means that offsets are committed as soon as a Kafka consumer reads a message. But if the message processing fails, the message will not be read again. At least once, which means that offsets are committed when the message is processed. If the processing fails, the message is read again. And the last one is exactly once commit which is possible only in Kafka to Kafka workflows. Right now, this is enough to know, but we will be having an in-depth discussion about the semantics of committing offsets in one of our future videos. So that's all we had to discuss about this short video. We learned about broker discovery. We learned various details about producers. We learned various properties of consumers. We learned many things about consumer groups as well as we learned a couple of things about consumer offsets. In our next video, we will be learning how to install Kafka and we will get started with Kafka in the console. So if you like the content of this video, please do hit the like button. If you like the content of my channel, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon with a brand new tutorial.